Hello mga ka-CPD. Again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening sa ating lahat. And ito naman po tayo for our learning session para sa ating mga ka-CPD. And to learn more, again, don't forget po no, na i-like and follow our FB pages and our YouTube channel, CPD CFT for Teachers. And today, meron tayong panibagong topic na ipepresent sa ating lahat. And this is what we call classroom management or tips po natin for all our teachers. Ayan. Okay, so of course, this classroom management is really important po, no? Since classroom management is part of our um, routine araw-araw. And sabi nga po, while teaching can be incredibly rewarding profession, it can also be very difficult to all of us. And this is really true for some teachers. Even though meron tayo mga newly hired teachers, meron din tayo mga seasonal teachers, and even some veteran teachers, nahihirapan pa rin po sa larangan ng classroom management. Many teachers go from being full of enthusiasm and energy to being completely overwhelmed by the task ahead. And also, marami rin tayo mga teachers, no? They come to the profession with a vision what teaching should look like. So, di ba ang iniisip natin? Madali na magturo, we have the learners, we have the teacher, pe-present the lesson, and so on. Pero hindi dun natatapos ang lahat ng ng pagtuturo. We have here the classroom management. And <clears throat> some teachers are always excited about seeing the spark in the students' eyes no? when they learn something new. And yun nga lang, however, no? new teachers face so many challenges as they prepare to teach the students they are assigned in their first position. And ito na nga yung pagpasok ng iba't ibang mga changes and challenges for all teachers. And doon papasok yung pinag-uusapan natin. Yung sinasabi nating mga ka-CPD no, na classroom management. Okay. So, challenges for the new teachers ang pag-uusapan natin today. Pero mamaya papakita ko rin yung iba pa para sa mga veteran teachers natin. Okay. So, the challenges, there are few careers talaga na that make a bigger impact than teaching ang mga teachers natin are shaping the next generation. Those that will decide what the future looks like. But this noble work doesn't come without challenges, mga ka-CPD. Many teachers face challenges both inside and outside of the classroom. Hindi natatapos sa four corners ng ating kwarto, ng ating classroom, ang challenges. And it makes the career feel overwhelming talaga mga ka-CPD. Okay, isa sa mga importante at talagang sinasabi natin na bahagi ng mga challenges natin bilang isang teacher is yung tinatawag nating discipline. Yan. Ito, uh, isa to sa mga talagang kinakaharap nating mga teachers. no And kahit ikaw ay new teacher or kahit ikaw ay isang veteran teacher, alam natin that discipline is one of the challenging factor sa loob ng classroom. Lalo na, ka, na yung mga learners natin, lalo na ngayon na they are Generation Z or the Gen Z. Medyo wild, medyo active, trying more things out of their curiosity. And most supervising teachers already have a grip on classroom management and discipline when student teachers arrive. Because of this, many teachers feel completely unprepared no, for the task of dealing with classroom discipline. Isa talaga to sa pinakamahirap talagang gawin. Lalo na kapag ang learners ay hindi cooperative sa ating ginagawa. Another, ito pa isa sa mga challenges natin, is yung juggling to many duties. Teachers wear so many hats talaga. Totoo naman yan eh. Hindi lang kasi tayo nagiging teacher, but also we are a counselor. We are a nurse. We've been also a resource provider. 
um, mentor, data analyst, librarian, etc. Mas so maraming marami. <clears throat> And bilang isang teacher, mga ka-CPD, <clears throat> alam natin na mahirap talaga yung pagsabay-sabay yung ganong sitwasyon. Lalo na kapag ikaw ay nasa elementary. Ang pagiging elementary teacher, yung primary school teacher talaga, mahirap talaga yan i ipagsabay-sabay, lalo na kung ang mga learners mo ay ikikater mo talaga ng bongga-bongga. Another, <clears throat> lack of teamwork and support. So, unfortunately, no, totoo naman po na may mga teachers talaga na they go into their first teaching job to find that they are completely on their own in navigating the different paces ng pagtuturo. And dito, medyo syempre, nandun yung nandun yung bigat ng different tasks ng para sa teacher, yung difficulty to find their own way. Usually, the teachers, they are, they are trying to find appropriate materials talaga without enough support from better ng teachers or sometimes the admin. Kaya nangyayari, nagkakaroon ng self-support si, si teacher. So, may, yung iba kasi naihiya o yun talaga, eh, may gustong patunayan. Remember, in an organization, Teamwork and collaboration is really important. So, minsan, ito yung mga, yung kinakatakot talaga ng mga administrators na hindi magkaroon ng teamwork and collaboration sa set ng faculty teachers. Next mo natin is yung tinatawag nating differentiation. Ayan. So, sa differentiation, alam naman natin na that teachers have no doubt been taught in their undergrad programs how important differentiation is. So, syempre, may mga learners tayo na iba-iba yung paraan kung paano sila matututo. Like what uh, I've discussed on the past topics that we have in the CPD, no? CPD-CFT natin, um, may mga iba't ibang learners, different styles and habits ng ating mga learners. And of course, um, dapat maging creative ka and innovative sa pag-create or paglikha ng iyong instructional materials or IMs. These teachers must also find different materials that will meet the needs of a wide variety of abilities and learning styles ng ating mga mag-aaral. Di ba, isipin niyo po mga ka-CPD, aminin natin na isa, isa sa mga kinakaharap natin bilang isang teacher talaga is yung hirap sa pagkuha sa interest ng mga mag-aaral. Sometimes we can get their interest, their, we can give the motivation to learn, but in the middle of the transition ng pagtuturo natin sa mga learners natin, we can see, we can see the struggling paces nila. Let's for example, we want to create them a poem, pero hindi pala sila magaling sa paglikha ng tula. Instead, they are good in dancing. So, doon pa lang, kailangan really creative si teacher sa kanyang mga learners. Kasi importante talaga na alam natin, kilala natin ang ating mga mag-aaral. Alright, so isa yan. Next po natin is what we call too much paperwork. Isa ito sa mga challenges na kinakaharap natin dito sa Pilipinas. As As a teacher here in the Philippines, mapa public school man yan or private school, we have a lot of tasks. And it's really difficult enough for some veteran teachers then to manage. So lalo na rin sa mga bago natin teachers. Itong mga paperwork sa to, like for example, lesson plans, data analysis, and maintaining documentation for a wide variety of purposes. Lahat yan na example ng paperworks. Lalo na sa public school, no, we have different school forms. Pero, syempre, it, uh, uh, it falls under the training. So, soon, pwede rin pong mag-offer tayo ng mga ganyan training sa school form making para mapakita rin natin sa mga kasamahan natin sa CPD, CFT na madali lang naman din. Yun nga lang, konting time management and of course, yung paglalaan ng schedule is really important. As, as a teacher, you should be really organized on what you are doing. So, next po natin na kinakaharap ni teacher. Ito po, yung feeling inadequate. Ayan. So, usually mga new teachers natin, they can be felt feeling very inadequate and 
as if, it, as if their efforts are for nothing. Yung parang pakaramdam nila, kulang sila. Pakaramdam nila, um, hindi nila nagagawa yung mga bagay na gusto nila. It's very difficult for different teachers to see significant learning gains while dealing with all of this. Many begin to feel that they may have chosen the wrong path. So, yun yung isa sa mga kinakaharap ng mga teachers natin. Pakaramdam nila, parang maling kurso kinuha ko. <laughs> okay. Hindi po. Dumarating talaga tayo sa point na nararamdaman lang natin yan. Then, find your motivation, secure motivation, and refocus and redirect. Kasi yun talaga naman yung goal natin, no? To teach, to share, and to educate our learners and the other people. So, kailangan mo lang isipin kung ano ba yung kung saan ka nagsimula. Okay? So, those are the basic challenges na kinakaharap ni teacher kadalasan. Now, pag-usapan natin yung isa pang set. The challenges that the teachers face in the classroom today. So, medyo broad yung kanina. Ngayon, I will give more definition on the challenges talaga. Then, cite tayo ng mga scenario. Kasi many teachers talaga, they are really experiencing the challenges inside and outside the classroom. Okay. First, isa sa mga challenges ng isang teacher is understanding the different learning styles. Last session natin dito, last month, I think that was last month, we have a session in learning styles here. And walo yung pinresent ko na different learning styles. Apat na learning styles and apat na uri ng learners. So, you can check it out on the CPDCFT FB page natin. Hanapin mo lang doon sa Facebook account mo. CPDCFT, pag napuntahan mo na yung CPDCFT for teachers, search mo lang yung session natin about learning styles. Andun lahat, kompleto na. And iba pang session sa atin, nandyan na sa FB page na yan. Kung wala ka nang gagawin, kundi makinig, manood, and lalo na sa new topic natin. So why is it connected, no? Balik tayo. Why is it connected for the teachers to really difficult to understand the different learning styles? Because understanding different learning styles is really a big challenge. Remember, a classroom, yan ay naglalaman ng iba't ibang mag-aaral na may iba't ibang malalawak na learning abilities and styles. And it's impossible for teacher to simply use one teaching method. Yun. Yun yung sinasabi ko po kanina. And it have to be effective for all of their learners. So mag-iisip ka bilang isang teacher, what's the best method and strategy to be used in order to deliver the quality of education to our learners. Diba? Isa yan sa big challenge talaga. Teachers are required to think strategically talaga when making the lesson plans to cater all learning styles in their classroom. So, isa sa mga tip ko dito, syempre tayo ay nakakaranas ng ganyan na tayo ay gumagawa ng iba't ibang, ng iba't ibang teaching method para lamang sa ating mga learners. Indicate mo sa lesson plan mo, ito tip ko na po ito, indicate mo sa lesson plan mo ang options. There are different activities for this group, for this group, and for this group. Halimbawa, group A, group B, and group C. Then, you should really know your learners. Kilalan natin sila. Kasi doon pa lang malalaman natin kung saan yung strength and weaknesses ng ating mga learners. And it's a form of, of course, yung tinatawag nating um, pag-establish ng professional relationship sa ating mga mag-aaral. Okay. We teachers are also have to be flexible talaga while actively teaching as they make, as we, sorry, as we make adjustments in real time based on student performance. Ganito kasi yan mga kasipidi. Dumating po ba sa point na yung nilagay mo sa lesson plan mo doon sa unang classroom no, o sa unang klase yung pinagturuan mo, hindi mo nasunod yung lesson plan mo? Then on the second classroom na pinasukan mo or second class na pinasukan mo, naging effective siya? So, ako kasi nangyari sa akin yan eh. And for sure, it also happened 
to all of you. So, ano ang ginawa mo? Okay? Ako ang ginawa ko, um, pinag-aralan ko muna ulit kung ano yung susunod na class ko. Then, I check my plan, my lesson plan. Kung hindi nagawa na ko ng section and they have the same level, so, kailangan mag-adjust. I need to put another option na kung saan pwede kong ilipat or palitan or bigyan ng panibagong strategy yung aking tinuturo sa kanila. Make it easier for some learners. We all know that we have different kinds of learners depending on their knowledge level. Meron tayong FL or mga fast learners. Meron din tayong SL or slow learners. So, kailangan talaga natin magkaroon ng flexible means pagdating sa pag-deliver ng ating mga lessons. Especially doon sa ating mga learners. This can take a lot of time talaga. So, medyo kakain ng oras and effort on the teacher's end. But the benefit of this is for the learner's performance or unbeatable naman din talaga. Okay? So, again, understanding the different learning styles, mahirap siyang simulan, pero it will take time talaga. And of course, as a teacher, it's our responsibility to give time to know your learners well and to provide them quality education based on their learning styles na meron sila. Okay, next po natin. Next po natin is um, the lack of effective communication. So ito, um, isa to sa mga common and also mahirap na challenge na kinakaharap lagi ng teacher. Teachers can also face significant challenges when trying to communicate with their students effectively. Tandaan natin, not every student, especially at lower grade levels, will know when to ask for help. Meron kasi tayong mga learners na mahiyain. So hindi sila lalapit, hindi sila magsasalita. Saka lang sila magsasalita kapag nangyari na yung di inaasang sitwasyon. Now, for example naman, most high school students, ayan, mga high school students, when we say high school students, kayo 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, are able to effectively communicate their needs, struggles, and triumphs. However, teachers with younger grade levels may not have the same experience. In this case, yung, yung teacher, you need to have to find an effective channel of communication so that the classroom can function well. Meron din ganitong scenario na kung saan yung mga learners nga, masyado silang maraming alam na. Now, hindi mo na sila maintindihan. So, dapat aralin mo rin yung kanilang generation. As a teacher, we need to adjust with the generation that we had to our learners. Kasi, alimbawa, kung isa kang millennial teacher at pinanganak ka ng millennial na, na generation for millennials and tinuturo ang Gen Z, no? Um, it's, it's one generation away to you. So, kailangan mo talagang alala, aralin at sabayan yung ating mga learners to the point that you can deliver the education, the quality of education to all. Now, there's not one answer to this problem talaga. Wala talagang kasagutan dyan sa lack of effective communication yan. Teachers may need to use different strategies. Yun lang ang tip ko. Maglaan ng different strategy and it depends on the learners, on the age of the learners, particularly for teachers that teach multiple grades. Ayan, sa mga private schools, oh, may nagtuturo ng grade 4, grade 5, grade 6. Kailangan mo magkaroon ng oras on how you give an effective communication. This can be a time-consuming task. You need to find a system to improve communication in the class. Not only help, not only to help the struggling students get support, but it can also help the teachers manage multiple students' needs at once. Kapag magaling kang um, kumilala ng mag-aaral, at alam mo kung paano ito kakausapin at humarap pa sa panibagong isang pang learner, madali na lang sa'yo, mga ka-CPD. Okay? So, signaling system, isa siya sa mga pwede kong itip, no? Yung pagtatasal ng kamay, 
uh, may ibig sabihin niyan especially sa kids pwedeng pwede yan yung mga hand signals natin like this no it means stop yan ituro natin sa kanila yon and of course sir hindi na ba effective sa high school yung mga hand, sig- hand signals na yan it's still effective lagyan mo ng code okay para po talaga ano um maunawaan din nila kung para saan yun. And also, you're teaching a non-verbal communication to all. Okay? So again, lack of, um, lack of effective communication is another challenge, but yet, we can still do something with this. Depends on the age of the learners, depends on the situation. Third, ito. Staying up to date with learning technology. Babalikan ko po yung binanggit ko kanina. We are, we are on the new generation. And our learners po talaga, ang ating mga learners po ay Gen Z. And you as a teacher, you are a millennial. Now, there's a lot of pressure talaga on teachers to constantly stay up to date with the latest technology. Sometimes, amingin natin mga kasipidi, mas mahusay pa yung mga mag-aaral sa paghawak ng device. So, okay lang ba na magpaturos tayo sa kanila? Somehow, pwede naman. But, hindi ko siya nire-recommend. My recommendation is, you need to learn what your technology is all about. And of course, you need na talagang mag-adjust. So, hindi ka lang ano, kailangan gum- gumawa ng ganito, etc. And sometimes, Kapag alam mo, yung pinag- alam mo yung feature ng gadget mo, ng technology na meron ka, at narinig mo sa learner mo, makakasamay ka sa kanila. Okay? Importante yan. Like, like for example, they are playing games, like sabihin natin yung Mobile Legends or ML, you can use Mobile Legends as one of your strategy in teaching. So paano? Uh, i-present mo siya through instructional materials mo. Para tamay content, pero in the game, in the manner of the game ng Mobile Legends. So marami tayong pwedeng gawin. And sometimes, kailangan talaga tayo ay maayos din po. Okay? So balikan ko lang yung kaninang size sa atin. No? Yung effective communication. Connected siya dito sa pangatlo. Okay? Kasi kapag ang mga learners natin gumagamit ng technology, they are using some words na talagang sila na nakakaalam. And you, as a teacher, should know that. You need to study about this. Kasi kung hindi mo aaralin, nako, mahirap ang baka ma-out of place tayo or ma-OP. Yan, yung term natin na ma-OP tayo doon sa nangyayaring event, especially in the classroom. Okay? Remember, our Gen Z students today are really different from millennial students. Okay, so again, and as a teacher, no? We need to we need to learn more about technology. Kasi karamihan ang ginagawa natin today is more on technology aspect. Okay? I remember, uh, uh, um, pwede rin naman po as a teacher, kung isa kang veteran teacher at medyo syempre, uh, matagal na sa servisyo ng pagtuturo, <clears throat> at nahihirapan ka sa paggamit ng technology, my tip is, you can ask help from the <clears throat> techie teacher o yung tech expert natin, and paturo tayo. Wala namang masama no, na magpaturo tayo sa hindi natin alam. We should be open with the things that we really don't know in order for us to learn and develop and to have improvement. Okay? So, walang hiya-hiya. Kapag teacher ka, you need to learn. And remember, education is a continuous process to learn. So, at any age, at any moment, sino ka man, at sino man kasama mo, learn and keep updated. Next challenge natin communicating with parents. Isa to sa aminin natin, no? Um, hindi madaling makipag-usap sa mga magulang. Lalo na kapag iba-iba rin ang behavior ng magulang. When parents take an active part, no, sa kanilang mag-aaral, sa kanilang anak, the student is much more likely to succeed. This issue also extend to inter or sorry, intrapersonal relationships. Students will often feel comfortable turning to a teacher in their time of need when it's emotional support they are looking for instead of academic support. 
So may mga learners kasi tayo na lalapit sa atin, magtatanong, mag-open ng problem. Okay, are we going to cater that? Yes. We need to cater their, their emotional problems or kung ano mga problem na yan. But still, kailangan natin bigyang diin na importante pa rin ang kanilang mga magulang at doon talaga sila kailangan makinig ng gusto. Tayo, magpo-provide lang tayo almost ng academic support. However, this dynamic can put a lot of pressure on the teacher talaga. The relationship can be tricky to navigate and the teachers often don't have enough hours in the day to check and, to check and talk with the, every student. Ang bawat mag-aaral may iba't ibang problema yan. Ang bawat mag-aaral may iba't ibang perspective yan. Do you need to give more time for the learners? Okay, hindi natin kakayanin. Pero we can set a schedule kung nais mo makalala pa ang iyong mga mag-aaral. Students need to be fully supported both in the school and at home in order to have the best chance of success. Dito, pag, dito papasok po yung sinasabi nating support from the parents. And as a teacher, trabaho din natin and responsibility din natin na magkaroon talaga ng relationship establishment sa ating mga magulang. Kapag may mga magulang, magkakaroon tayo ng maayos na communication. Okay. O, mga ka-CPD, no? Ito, isa sa mga tip ko. Uh, for a while po. Okay, mga kasi PD. Ayan. So, isa sa mga problem natin kapag hindi tayo nagkaroon ng communication sa ating parents, mahihirapan tayo. Okay? So, one of my tip dito, one of my tips here is, stop, kung meron tayong group chat sa messenger, no? Meron tayong messenger group chat sa ating mga mag-aaral, we should also establish a group chat with parents. A separate group chat. Okay? In other means, kahit hindi messenger, email, or kung ano man, basta meron tayong list of communication. Makapag-establish tayo ng communication sa ating mga magulang. Alright. Okay. So, another is the pressure from school administrator. So, ito ay isa sa mga challenges. Pero hindi naman din ganun kadalas. Sometimes kasi, ang mga school admin ang mga school admin like the school head, principals, o kung ano pa man, they see the teachers as exclusive responsible for student achievement talaga. And the growth indicators, the professional development, and the discipline. With so much of the teacher's um, tasks, a supportive school administration can make a world of difference to both their success and student success. So syempre, ang gusto ng ating mga mga school head and school administrators is magkaroon din ng improvement not only to the point na learners lang ang focus natin but also to the teachers. So, may konting pressure para magkaroon ng, syempre, involvement, yung, yung teachers' development, and paano yun? Syempre, para magkaroon ng teacher, atin ka ng mga trainings. So, may support doon si school admin. And ito, no? itong training natin na to, itong session na to, this can be used. No? This can be used as, as one of your learning talaga sa ating professional development. So, at avail lang kayo ng mga ating mga sessions, sa mga seminars, sa CPD, CFT. Alright, so continue tayo ng isa pa. We have... Another challenge is creating engaging lesson plans that fit the curriculum. 
Ayan. Isa to, no? Uh, and beyond, no? Beyond just being engaging talaga. Time constraining din. Constraining din yung issue na to. Itong challenge na to. While there is a syllabus, no? Or meron tayong mga subjects. Uh, meron tayong pinagbabatay na curriculum guide. Students will often need additional time pa rin to fully grasp a subject. Many times, as the school will outline a detailed curriculum or sometimes the Department of Education mag-outline niya ng curriculum for the school year giving a jump-pack schedule for all the topics that need to be covered in a particular year. May mga te- Ito mga teachers natin, we need to rely heavily on a problem-solving skills in order to maximize our time in the classroom. Lalo na kapag malaki yung site yung class size mo, lalo na sa public school. So, it can be very difficult to ensure every student is getting the support they need to fully understand a lesson. Teachers may work incredibly hard to create a great lesson plan that just doesn't um, resonate with all of their students. Another I, I'm sorry, balikan natin itong isa. Nakalimutan mo magbanggit ng, ano, ng tip. Okay, my tip here is aralin mo lang mabuti yung curriculum. Then, find other resources. Consult teachers. Consult the head. The school admin. Importante kasi ang openness. And, kailangan magkaroon tayo ng ng wide, ng wide use of different resources. Okay, another is the behavior and classroom management. Ito, paulit-ulit siya, no? Pero totoo talagang paulit-ulit din natin kinakaharap to every day. Creating distinct behavioral and academic plans can help the teachers stay on track and meet their educational goals as the school year progresses. But, mga kasipid, this doesn't happen without a lot of work and support for from administrators, parents, and of course, other educational professionals. Oftentimes, motivating students with engaging lessons can be enough to manage student behavior in the classroom. But in some cases, students may need more support to manage behavioral, behavioral issues and create a growth mindset. Mga kasipid mga kapakuguro, mga nanonood na nakikinig. Importante po kasi PD na magkaroon tayo ng growth mindset, lalo na kung kinakaharap natin ang behavior problem sa classroom. You will experience na sobrang wild, sobrang tahimik, etc. Ang dami na dyan. So, bilang isang teacher, lawakan mo ang patience mo, have a growth mindset with this, mag-aral ka pa kung paano mo pa mamanage ang, ang classroom, lalo na ang behavior and attitude ng mga mag-aaral. Kagaya nito, kung nanonood ka ngayon nito, that's really nice. Kasi you really want to know what kind of strategies ang gagamitin mo, lalo na sa pag-manage ng behavior and attitudes ng mga mag-aaral. Okay, another, time-consuming administrative work. Ito, sinama ko na to. Although, talagang, alam kasi natin mga kasi-PD na the overwhelming amount of administrative work on teachers can adversely affect the work-life balance. So, marami kasi tayong schools, no, na talagang, nandun yung, after mo magturo, you will do the paperworks. And these paperworks medyo napapagod talaga tayo. Like for example, uh, pag-check talaga ng assignments, creating lesson plans, filling out the reports, and more. E sa public school, mga ka-CPD, meron tayong school form 1 or SF1, SF2, SF3, SF4, SF5A, SF5B, hanggang SF10 yan. And meron pang ibang kasunod na forms. So medyo nakakapagod kasi parang iisipin natin, and daming paperworks. Okay? Here in the Philippines, we have a lot of paperworks. And as a teacher, kailangan lang talaga growth mindset. Think positive. While they're always looking for ways for the streamline, tutulungan naman din tayo ng admin o ng 
school administration regarding this. Hanggat maaari, hahanap at hahanap ang paraan para mapadali din ang task ni teacher. Okay? So, my tip here is, as a teacher, kailangan meron ang schedule. As a teacher, mag-set ka ng, ng priority mo sa hindi. And don't forget that you should give time for your family. Ayan. Kailangan natin i-separate yung work sa family time or sa personal time natin. Okay? Have a balanced life. Okay? So, that's my tip. Kailangan lang, ganun lagi tayo mag-isip. Okay, next. Lack of funding. Ito, serious to. Kasi, mostly public schools across the country run into issues with funding. Teachers are the ones that are expected to get creative and make do with the resources that they do have. So, di ba, nababalita naman natin sa television na karamihan ng mga teachers medyo struggling talaga sa funding at tayo ang gumagawa ng sarili nating gamit. Beyond just a lack of classroom materials, meron din tayo dinatawag na underfunding can also lead to inability to hire enough teachers. Oftentimes, this is remedied by increasing the class size. While it may seem like the only solution, large class size can negatively impact the classroom experience for many students. Diba, pag mas lumaki ang bilang na mag-aaral sa classroom, medyo mahihirapan tayo at higit sa lahat, yung kalidad ng edukasyon, hindi na rin kagaya nung dati. It leaves less time for individual, for individual teaching and one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher. Sa ibang public schools ngayon, we have three shifts, no? 6 to 10, 10 to 2, 2 to 6. So, ilang oras lang ang paso na mag-aaral. Hindi gaya nung panahon natin na ilang oras, yung iba maghapon pa. Ngayon, ang isang subject, ang isang subject, ilang oras na lang. Hindi na siya one hour. Sometimes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. So, again, this can lower the quality of learning and have a negative impact on student learning. So my tip here is, okay, as a teacher, we should be, okay, kailangan maging madiskarte pa rin tayo. And he, kailangan gumamit tayo ng iba't ibang pamamaraan. And of course, gumamit tayo ng mga bagay na talagang makakatulong sa kalidad ng edukasyon sa ating mag-aaral. And of course, if we can help the admin to find other sources, why not? Mas maganda yun. Okay, let's just be creative and innovative all the time. Another, okay, karamihan teachers, isa sa mga challenges is burnout. Ayan, napapagod na daw. Ito yung tinatawag nating emotional element. As they know that their work is shaping lives and the future, as a teacher, we have high demand from all the job responsibilities teachers commonly experience burnout talaga. So, ano ba ang symptoms kapag ikaw yung nababurnout? Remember, mga ka-CPD, hindi lang naman tayo teachers ang nababurnout, but also in other jobs. But, sa teacher, paano ba maburnout si teacher? Ito mga symptoms, no? Una, feeling drained after working on lesson plans. Pagod ka na, gumagawa ka pala ng lesson plan. Hanapin mo yung kasamahan mong ganyan at kausapin natin. <laughs> okay, another. Dreading going to work. Papunta ka pa lang sa trabaho, ayaw mo na, parang pinatamad ka na. Okay, another. Lacking the motivation to be productive. Hindi ka na productive gaya ng dati. Teachers should try to have the best work-life balance as possible in order to avoid burnout. So, connected na naman siya doon sa isa natin kaninang challenge. And again, kapag balance yung buhay natin, wala tayong masyadong burn out na nalaramdaman. Okay, walang stress. Ito, ito, ito tip ko. Balansihin mo ang oras mo. And para naman sa mga administrators, ayan. Ito naman ang tip ko. Kailangan magkaroon tayo ng active role in education in order to help the teachers prevent or in order to prevent the teachers leading to burn out. Kailangan tayo mga school admins, makaisip din tayo din ng pamamaraan kung paano natin mapapagaan 
ang nararamdaman ng mga teachers. We need to consult them. Kumustahin natin. And of course, may mga bagay tayo pwedeng gawin na kung saan makakatulong. Like for example, team building, yan. Ano pa ba? Uh, meeting, pero maayos sa meeting, hindi ganun katagal. Okay? And of course, as a leader of the school, kailangan tayo ay uh, may sense of responsibility pa rin na tumulong. Kahit tayo school admin, handa tayong tumulong sa ating mga teachers. Okay? Now, effective classroom management. Ito na, pag-usapan na natin ito mga ka-CPD. Ito kasi yung pinaka, sabihin natin, challenge every day, every section, every learner, every school year. And effective classroom management is necessary for all teachers and facilitators. Kapag master mo ang classroom management, you know the different aspects of what is going in the classroom. Nadideliver mo yung lesson na maayos and of course, naka-anchor pa ang paraan ng pagtuturo mo sa kurikulum. But, meron bang perfect classroom management? Later on, we will answer that. Okay, <clears throat> classroom management. I-define natin ang konti kung ano ba itong classroom management na to. Classroom management refers to the wide variety of skills and techniques na pwedeng gamitin ni teacher to keep the students organized, orderly, focused, attentive, on task, and academically productive during a class. Okay, so isa pala siyang set ng technique and skills. And of course, classroom management is an ongoing process yan. It's a multi-factor process. So maraming pwedeng maging dahilan ng classroom management para umayos, magulo, para maging magulo, o kung ano man ang pwedeng maging factor. Okay. Ano, kapag mahusay ka sa classroom management, ito yung benefits na makukuha mo. Learners learn best in a safe and secure environment. Mas matututo sila. Another, it saves time and effort for the teacher. Last one, it is easier to engage students and get them on task. Kaya nga po importante, no? Importante kasi PD, unang araw ng pasokan, establish mo na kagad ang classroom management mo. Importante, importante yan. Kahit isa ka ng veteranong teacher, isa kang bagong teacher, still, kapag na-achieve mo na maayos ang classroom management, mas mararamdaman ng learner na safe sila. Less time sa effort kasi kabisado mo na mas madaling engage ang mag-aaral at gawin ang trabaho nila para mas matuto sila. Okay? Now, ito naman ay mga tips ko naman para sa ating mga new teachers natin. Sa mga new teachers natin dyan, pero pwede rin naman dito sa mga veteran teachers natin, Ito yung ibang, iba't ibang suggestion lang para sa routine natin and procedures para mas matulungan pa yung mga bagong teachers natin. Ma-manage ang classroom. Una, kapag hirap ka sa classroom management, sabi nga ng commercial, huwag mahigyang magtanong. Diba? Reach out to veteran teachers. Mas kabisado nila. Pangalawa, experience is the best learning. Pwede tayo mag-consult sa ating mga veteranong teacher. Okay? Next, number two natin, make list. Okay, make list. So, when you say make list, uh, isulat mo yung mga nakikita mong positive sa classroom mo. Especially to the learners. Isulat mo yung mga nakikita mong negative or yung for improvement. Then, analyze. On the third column, kumuha ka ng solution. Magtanong ka kung tama ba yung solution mo. Okay? Number three, ask for help. Laging ask for help. Kahit magaling ka na, kahit mahusay ka pa, kahit matagal ka nang nagtuturo, ask for help. Okay? Asking for help, it, it, doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean na binababa mo yung sarili mo. Asking for help is checking if your work is correct. Asking for help is helping you not to create mistakes at maubos ang oras mo. Okay? Number four natin, 
establish clear expectation. Uh, Pang-apat na tip ko, mag-establish ka sa mga mag-aaral mo ng mali- maayos na expectations pa lang. Umpisang-umpisa pa lang. Okay? Next, be present. Ayan, be present tayo. Be present all the time. Okay? Another, be consistent. Okay, be consistent tayo sa ginagawa natin. Let's say for example, on the first week of teaching, hinigpitan mo. On the second week of teaching, hinigpitan mo. On the third week of teaching, hinigpitan mo. Hanggang end of school year, mahigpit ka. Okay, consistent ba yun? Okay, remember, consistent ka, pero kailangan mong i-adjust pa rin, maging flexible ka kahit pa paano. Okay, let's say for example, ganito. On the first week of your teaching, may pit ka. On the second week of teaching, may pit ka. On the third week of teaching, medyo may pit ka. On the fourth week of teaching, hindi ka na ganun kahigpit. Okay, hanggang makuha mo yung chemistry mo with your learners. Okay, importante, importante ka CPD na aralin mo ang learning style sa meron na mag-aaral mo. The attitude, the behavior, those are all important. Those are all important factors. Another, develop professional relationship with students. Hanggat ma- maaari, establish mo yan. Okay? Next, schedule some downtime. Downtime. Like for example, um, kung kaya mo maglaan sa mga mag-aaral mo na medyo kailangan bigyan ng oras at panahon, give time for them. Okay. Classroom management for new teachers pa rin tayo. Uh, isa-isay na natin. No? Sabi ko nga kanina, reach out to veteran teachers. As new teachers, Um, kailangan mag-consider talaga tayo ng mag-ask ng help sa ating mga veteran teachers. The guidance of veteran teachers can be invaluable. Reach out to some and ask for advice. They can provide many tips and tricks from all the years of experience. They can also help with resources for materials. By reaching out to other teachers, new relationships can be developed that will help the the novice teachers natin to both professionally and emotionally. You may please na sinabi ko kanina, lahat ng forms, data, records, and other daily tasks, kailangan organize ka by creating some bliss to check up every day. For me, no, even ako ay isang sabihin natin na matagal na rin nagtuturo, I cannot keep up with all the tasks if I don't have the list. So, kailangan meron kang listahan bilang isang teacher. Nandun yung dates mo, yan. Let's say, for example, making the grades or the cards or the exam, pagre-record, kailangan malinaw po. Okay? Then, ask for help. Uh, new teachers cannot be afraid to do this. They need to, to know that they can go to their principal, assistant principal, instructional coach, team leader, or mentor, or colleague to ask for help. Most administrators know how overwhelming all the challenges, especially para sa mga new teachers natin, and are willing to provide some relief from the weight of all the obstacles. Establish clear expectation, you must make sure and make very clear from the beginning pa lang na importante ay ganito, etc. Ganon din sa mga parents natin, no? For the parents who cannot make it, teachers can give them a positive, upbeat um, phone call, tawagan natin, to introduce themselves and let them know how the classroom will operate. This can prevent a lot of problems and conflict later on. By establishing these expectations with the learners and families, among teachers are able to be proactive talaga. Okay po? Okay, o oh, ito pa yung iba. So dito, be present, no? Kailangan you make, um, you look and may sound simple and obvious. But the teacher's presence just by walking around the room and monitoring can make a huge difference sa mga mag-aaral. Dito mo pala, pag nag-ikot-ikot ka sa loob ng classroom, mararamdaman ng mga mag-aaral, ay, binabantay ang kami ni sir. Ay, no-observe kami ni sir. Ni ma'am. So, That's another great idea to to greet the students then. Halimbawa, hindi yung laging sa pintuan ka lang dadaan, nandoon ka sa harapan, hindi pa laging ganun. 
it changes a routine. No? This conveys a message to students that the teacher is excited and enthusiastic about the day ahead, which can be contagious then to all. Okay? Another natin is you be consistent. Be consistent whatever the rule or procedure mo. Teachers must be sure to be consistent in enforcing them. Students find comfort and security in some consistency. Another na that develop relationships with students. I believe uh, this one of the most important tips for the teachers and veteran teachers na gawin to. As discipline can be the most overwhelming and discouraging part of teaching, developing sincere and genuine relationships with students can make a huge difference in how the classroom operates and the overall classroom environment. As a teacher, we need to invest in this kind of relationship. Students quickly learn that the teacher gen, um, genuinely um, cares for them. It is much harder for the student then to disregard instructions or lack effort when there is a strong connection between the student and the teacher. Okay, another. Schedule, schedule some downtime, no? Um, this is really essential, especially for the new teachers. So many that are brand, um, brand new to the profession burn out very quickly. Maraming kakahir lang burn out na kagad eh. Okay, this is the reason why that we lose so many young teachers early on their careers. The new teacher can spend all of their time on their job, even though there is easily enough work to fill up every minute of the day and still not getting everything done. But to prevent this, ang mga teachers must take some time to walk away from those tasks. Kailangan din mag-put down din tayo, uh, magplano din tayo, manood din tayo ng mga favorite natin na show, uh, magbasa ng libro na gusto mo, or spend time with friends and family. So, pahinga rin pag may time. This can be like a reset button for us teachers. Um, Walk away and get renewed, rested, and ready for the rewarding experiences ahead. Kailangan lang positive mindset, may growth mindset lang as a teacher. Okay, now let's proceed to classroom management and techniques. Sabi nga po, di ba, students are like paper airplanes na talagang nasa loob ng classroom. Students race between desks. Ayan. You can get a word in as they yell over you. May mga disruptive behavior talaga. Doesn't have to be this dramatic. Parang ano lang yan, um, parang sa isang palabas. No? Kapag meron isang eksena, sobrang gulo na. Yon, ang tawag doon ay poor classroom management. Will almost assuredly, uh, assuredly um, elevate your stress and burnout rates. Kapag hindi maayos ang classroom management mo bilang isang teacher, at isang advisor ng classroom, tatanda ka bigla. <laughs> May stress ka bigla at mabe-burn out ka. Okay? According to some reports way back 2019, it indicates that the teacher's overwhelming report, a lack of professional development support in improving classroom management. So medyo totoo, no? Marami sa mga kaguruhan natin ang hirap sa classroom management. Despite this uh, unideal situation, there's a straightforward and effective classroom management approaches na kung saan i-share ko mamaya. Ginagawa mo siguro or maaari hindi mo pa nagawa. Pamilyar ka na or hindi ka pa pamilyar. These approaches can enhance um, pro-social student behavior and academic engagement, establishing um, orderly learning environment. So, let's start. Okay, first, Universal Classroom Management Strategies for Educators. Uh, meron tayong tinatawag na iba't ibang techniques para ma-improve yung classroom behavior. So, kailangan lang natin mag-create ng better classroom community at magkaroon ng positive classroom. So, paano yan? Here's the model. We will use the model, the model ideal behavior. Make a habit of demonstrating behavior you want to see. Maraming studies ang nagsishow that modeling the effectively teaching students to act in different situations. And as, um, itong model na to, 
ay makakatulong din to mahod yung mga mock conversations with administrator or other teacher or student. Okay. Paano siya gagawin? Simple lang. Use polite language. So, marespeto lang. Bilang isang teacher, pakita natin may respect sa bawat isa. Sometimes, kung papansinin natin, may mga learners na tayo today na Gen Z talaga na hindi na marunong magpuat opo. Ikaw ang gumamit. Iparamdam natin sa kanila na we are educators. We are teaching. Then therefore, kailangan nila matutunan yan. Okay? Maintain eye contact sa mga kausap natin. Especially sa mga mag-aaral. Another, keep phones in your pockets. As a teacher, eto no, uh, sad to say, pero may mga nakikita tayong ganito. Yung nasa classroom ka pero nagsiselfone ka. It's really unethical for you as a teacher. Huwag natin gawin kasi gagayahin tayo na mag-aaral. Paano kaya if dumating sa point na magtanong yung mag-aaral na, ba't kayo ma'am, pe, ba't kayo ma'am and sir pwedeng gumamit ng cellphone? Ako hindi pwede. Okay? Another, let one another speak uninterrupted. Huwag na huwag mong hayaang maputo lang sinasabi ng isa. Give time to listen and give time to give an answer. Another, raise concern about one another's statements in a respectful manner. Okay? So, importante naman talaga na mabigyan natin ng lina o kung naman yung mga problems and maayos to. Respetado ang bawat isa. Then, after a class, pwede mo rin i-present sa mga learners mo yung mga ideal behaviors mo na gusto mong i-highlight sa buong taon. Okay, another. Let students help establish the guidelines. Let the learners be part of what you are doing. At what points are, um, pwede mo kasi ilagay um, simple discussion should lead to mutually understanding and respected expectations for your classroom culture. Kung ano man yung kultura na meron ka sa pinaaral mo, that's really important. And of course, it's essentially needed for the teacher para malaman nila kung ano yung flow at kung paano mo to gagawin. Okay, another, document rules. Don't let your mutually respected guidance go forgotten. You'll likely want to post these rules up in your classroom if you haven't already for occasional references din siya. If you're, if you're feeling creative, you can include the rule in the list of students. Kung merong handbook, mas maganda yon. And ilagay natin lahat ng information. Kasi kapag may mga rules, kailangan natin i-document. May mga learner style na nakikinig yan pag sinasabi mo, pero hindi nag-retain. So what we need to do is, etong mga rules natin, i-document natin, pwede i-print, ilagay sa classroom, or bigyan ng copy ang mga mag-aaral. Okay? Importante ang pag-establishment ng rules. Okay, avoid punishing the class. Ito bawal naman talaga na ito, no? Okay? Uh, bawal na po tayong mamalo o magkaroon ng physical na pangabuso sa mga mag-aaral. Address isolated discipline problems individually instead of punishing the, the entire class. Okay? Um, instead, uh, instead of doing the, instead of punishing the class, call out specific students in a friendly manner. For example, um, Jonathan, do you have a question? Pag sinabi niya, none. Okay, so idudutong mo na, stop talking and disrupting other students. Okay? So, alimbawa, meron isang ano, isang pang mag-aaral na uh, wala sa focus. Ito ang pwede mo sabihin. Do you need help focusing? O, pag sabi niya, nahihirapan daw siya. Then, pay attention and stop fooling around while I'm talking. Di ba? Then, with this, this your basic approach will allow you to keep a friendly disposition sa mga mag-aaral while immediately acknowledging the inappropriate behavior. Okay? Ito, encourage initiative. Okay? I-promote natin ang growth mindset hindi lamang sa teacher but also to our learners. Inject natin to sa mga lesson plan natin. 
para mga learns natin talagang matuto at maging positibo. For example, if you're reading a specific chapter in a textbook or libro, propose that they read the following one too, di ba? When they deliver their subsequent presentations to preview the next chapter of your behalf, you may find the other students want a bit more work as well. Okay? Basta encourage lang natin sila kasi yun naman talaga, once they are encouraged, they, are wi- they have the willingness to learn. Offer praise, ayan, importante ito, no? Kapag mayroong nagawang maganda mag-aaral, purihin natin. May hindi masyado maganda nagawang mag-aaral, purihin pa rin natin. Perhaps more importantly, it encourages the students to repeat positive behavior. Let's say for a student, a student exemplifies advanced problem-solving skills habang ginagawa ang math problem. Praise her or praise his use of specific tactics should go along with ensuring he or she continues to use these tactics. Okay? So, pwedeng inspire the class, improves the student's self-esteem, and of course, reinforcing rules and values you want to see. Okay, ito na, yung nonverbal communication. So, sa nonverbal communication, marami tayong ginagawang groupings, differentiated instruction strategies, and techniques. For example, um, running learning stations. Ayan, pwede yan. Yung may station sa bawat classroom, pas pagpuntay natin mga mag-aaral. So, maganda yan kasi it's more non-verbal communication. It allows you as a teacher to deliver a range of non-spoken content types. Pwede siyang um, videos, infographics, and physical objects Ako ano pa man. Okay, another is holding a party, holding parties. Even at just for 20 to 30 minutes, they should be happy with snacks and selection of group games to play. So, we clarify natin sa mga mag-aaral natin that you're holding the party to reward them and they can earn future parties by demonstrating ideal behavior, um, collective scoring high on assessments and more. It's more on rewarding system. Alright? Next, give tangible rewards. Let's say a few students are actively listening throughout the entire lesson, answering questions and asking their own. Before the class ends, walk over to their desk. Ayan, as a teacher, no? Uh, punta na sa desk, tapos give them raffle tickets. Ayan. So, others can also learn, state allowed what each student did to earn the tickets. So, reward system pa rin. Okay? So, malaking tuloy, ay, ako din. So, nagkukumahog na yan, nagmamadali na yan sa susunod na araw bilang ikaw ang teacher. Another, make positive letters and phone calls, especially sa mga magulang natin, no? Uh, letting parents know has a trickle-down effect. And they will generally conclude congratulate their kids and their kids will likely come to class eager to earn more positive feedback. Okay? So again, um, magsulat tayo sa ating mga magulang and kung di man, patawag natin. Alright, next, build excitement for content and lesson plans. Ayan. As the bell rings and students settle, go through an agenda of the day's highlight for the whole class. So, ang tip ko dito, uh, mag-include na tayo ng group tasks, engaging um, bits of content and anything else na pwede gamitin. For example, um, throughout the day, you've learned about, so doon pala makukuha ang attention ng ating mga learners. Then, of course, how to talk like you're a teacher. So, kailangan maayos yan. Kailangan sentence yan. Malinaw. Why don't know anyone who's won the lottery? Yan. The goal of classroom management, mga ka-CPD, is to immediately interest students in your agenda and thereby dissuade misbehavior. Okay, different types pa rin, on a pre-study time. Yeah, provide tayo ng mga range of activities during pre-study time to appeal to students who struggle to process content in silence individually. You can do this by dividing your class into clearly section solo and team activities. Pwede yan. 
para lang mag-provide ng audio book kung meron man, basta relevant sa lesson, uh, maintaining a designated quiet space kung sakasakali, and creating a station for challenging groups, challenging group games, and allowing students to work in groups while taking notes and completing work away from the quiet zones. Okay, right group contacts. Ayan. Group contacts should be based on expectation that students have, have for each other and you have for them. You can gather the past thoughts by holding a discussion about what's the ideal, ideal group member does and how he or she acts. Once you you have written the, con the contract, encourage natin yung mga mag-aaral natin to come up with consequences for violating expectations. Okay? By having them sign a fresh version of the contract before each group task and project or written works, you're empowering them to hold each other accountable. Another, assign open-ended projects. This starts by giving the class a list of broad project ideas, asking each student to choose one. Uh, be sure to provide rub uh, a rubric for each project that clearly defines expectations. Um, by both then, uh, challenging students should notice their, um, number one, work and learn at their own pace. Yeah. Engage actively with appropriate content. Demonstrate knowledge as effectively as possible. With these benefits, students may actually look forward to taking on new projects. Okay, another, um, give only two scores for informal assessments. So recall that, um, instead, no, just state if a student did or did not meet expectations, then provide natin ang struggling student with a clear path to improve. So papasok dito yung um, remedial classes, intervention, okay? Okay, classroom management strategies for individual um, students. So, ito yung mga uri ng estudyante, tapos ano yung pwede natin gawin, no? Use edtech that adjust to each student. So, give lang natin ng student ng, uh, yun, alam ba, nahihirap na sa proseso ng pag-aaral niya, try natin ng mga educational technology na pwede ma-adapt sa pangangalangan niya. There are many games and platforms that use adaptive learning principles to detect a given student's skills deficits, serving them content to help overcome them. Okay? One example in Prodigy Math. Next. Interviewing mo ang mag-aaral mo. Okay? Lalo na yung mga not academically engaged or display lang sa behavior nila. Ask this, what helps about folks? Who they work well with? Their favorite types of lessons? Their favorite in-class activities? Which kind of exercise has helped them remember the key lesson points? Then, i-address din natin yung inappropriate um, of task behavior quickly. So acting sooner than later will have ensured the negative feelings, whether between students or you and a student, one faster. Failure to act can result in more poor behavior, leading to needlessly, needlessly um, difficult conversations. Consider peer teaching. Ito sila sabi ko lagi. Use peer teaching in a classroom management strategy if you feel your top performance can help you engage and educate disruptive and struggling um, students. And peer teaching activities such as pairing students together as reading bodies can be especially spe um, beneficial for students who suffer from low confidence and poor uh, interpersonal skills. All right. Gamify personal learning plans. Ayan. 
Ito na banggit ko na kanina to. Gawa tayo ng mga strategy na uso ngayon sa mga learners natin. Okay? Adjusting your scoring system and using the stages. Classroom management pa rin as a method and strategies an educator used to maintain a classroom. Ang environment that is conducive to student success and learning. We should also involve the effective use of your time in the classroom to be as productive as possible. So mga strategies, lead, lead your class. And your mantra every day, I am your teacher, I am the teacher here. Yan ang mantra natin. Practice, practice consistency. If the rules are set, follow through with the consequences. Bilang isang teacher, hindi tayo pwedeng baguhin yung sarili nating gawang um, rules. Another, engage. Let the students engage in creating the best practices policy for um, classroom. Yan. Hanggat maaaring may connection na nangyayari po dyan. Next. Discover, I'm sorry, demonstrate. Demonstrate natin mga acceptable behavior. Treat the students with the same respect you demand. Then of course, magkaroon ng playtime, especially sa mga um, kinder and grade 1 to 6. Bound tayo para makatulog din. And of course, uh, pag may playtime, yung mga learners for sure, nakapag-relax din, na, din sila. Switch. Switch activities so the students can get out of control. So, dyan, medyo mahirap yan unless provide tayo ng sulat and napakalapit lang. Okay? Signal. Ayan, konektado siya sa nauna. Have a signal that shows the class they are off task. Mm -hmm. Alright, next. Write and communicate lagi. Importante po yan. Know your expectations, write them out before the class shows up. Okay? Ito yung tipo ng mga pagkakataon na, ay, anong po itong section na ito, kailangan magandas ako. Diba? So, yun, yun. Communicate your expectation to, to, uh, to the class. Display them and, of course, discuss them. Yan. Okay, team up. Ayan. Paano ang team up? Ang team up with others in the classroom. Ask them to help reinforce the rules. <laughs> and setting guidelines for the classroom will help develop the respect that is needed to students can do their best. Another mga kasi PD, observe and ask. Observe a teacher who has good uh, classroom management skills, then giyahin mo, paalam ka lang sa kanya para matuto ka rin. Then another, ask co teachers for ideas or help Ask them to come observe you and give feedback. Remember the learn, listen, and watch. Learn the triggers for when the class gets chaotic. Avoid or limit those triggers in the classroom. Yung pangalawa, mga ka-CPD, listen to the students. If a student is expressing a certain behavior, address it um, quickly. Last one, watch to see what engages the students. Start lang ng more of those teaching techniques. Okay, first, reward and motivate. Reward mo yung isang teacher. Remind mo yung estudyante mo may good behavior. Motivate the other students. Build a relationship with the students and motivate them to reach beyond. Another is the show. Show the students how being a good citizen starts right now. Another is yung tinatawag natin video class. We play the play back the video in class and discuss the behavior, good or bad. 
techniques of achieving good class management. Okay. Body language and physical proximity. Hindi naman kasi ang mga learners natin mga kasi PDI ay nakatitig lang sa iba gapon. For sure, nakatitig din sila sa suot mo, etc. So, paano yan? Eto na. Setting rules and routines. No? Teachers need to establish some class rules of discipline. So, sa loob ng classroom, eto na po. Um, okay. Follow directions quickly. Hanggat maaari. Raise your hand to permission to speak. Then, make smart choices. And keep your dear teacher happy. Okay, next, offer praise and give incentives. Praising the learners or giving them incentives when they do good things means that you expect them to do this behavior more and more. When um, it's misbehave, use a verbal punishment with words of disappointment that lead them to behave well in the future. So avoid using them on physical um Physical punishment, okay? Kasi bawal na rin yan. Another, a good lesson plan. Planning a lesson which is suitable to the next level. Interest and learning styles. And each group of learners can save time, effort, and guarantee learning. Control class energy. Teachers use energizers and settlers to keep control over the learners and achieve Good class management. So, nasa enerhiya mo, cons consistent ka. Okay? Ang pag-establish mo na um, ng iba't ibang classroom management, problems and issues from your classmates. Huwag na muna. Okay. Then, frontal teaching and group dynamics. So, kita-kita naman kung ano yan. Dito kasi, pinapakita na may teacher sa table, tapos may mga estudyante. Meron din ganito, apat, group dynamics. Meron din letter B, teacher. Alright. Next. Okay, learner's involvement in activities. So, ito naman, paano malalaman ni teacher na talaga nag-increase na ng learners' involvement and participation? Okay. This R. Okay. A. Arrange the seating of learners in a way that enables interaction. Letter B. Give effective, clear instructions. C. Um, relate natin ang material to students' lives, experiences, and current events. The next piece of instruction is best if it is fast. Then engage the students in a work, um, in a group work and role playing as misbehavior happens because the students find acting out more interesting than a boring um, lesson. Alright, ayan. So, reset lang natin ulit. Okay. So, yung mga ganito po tayo. So, wait lang. Share lang natin ulit sa ating screen. Ayan, nakashare pa pala. Okay. Ayan. So, forward ko lang ulit. Ayan. So, ito po, no? Um, Teacher-student rapport. So, some teachers din talaga... Um, kailangan talaga natin mag-establish ng strong band with our students. Kasi kapag wala tayong na-create na, na strong relationship 
sa ating mga mag-aaral, mahihirapan din tayo. Okay? Teachers need to be patient. We need to be understanding, helpful then, And of course, kailangan sometimes strict din tayo. Firm and set tayo ng rules and regulations. At syempre, may consequences kapag nag-violate. Okay? Then, um, some tips for rapport, rapport building. No? Call your students by name hanggat maaari. Importante po kasi yon, Kasi ang isang teacher, kailangan kilala mo yung mga learners mo. Then, use eye contact hanggat maaari. Non-verbal cues such as nod, yung pagtango, facial expectation, expressions to indicate that you're interested on what they are saying. Then, let students know you care about them by attending an outside class activity like um, sporting events or meron silang contest sa loob ng classroom sa, sa, sa school gym, pwede po yun. Then of course, repeat lang natin and magkaroon tayo ng um, paraphrasing on their answers. Halimbawa, nagsalita ng ganito yung learner natin, i-rephrase mo lang sa teacher na nauunawaan mo yung sinasabi nila. Okay? Then, reward students with verbal praise. Say, very good, alright, uh, excellent, so, marami tayong pwedeng gamitin dyan. If you're not sure of what a student is asking about, ask some questions which will help you clarify. Don't say, I don't understand what you mean. So, wag na wag yan. Okay? Kasi kawawa yung ating mga learners kapag ganyan. Okay? Balik lang natin ng konti. Okay. So, yan. So, ito, isa to sa mga techniques, no? Na pwede natin gamitin para sa ating mga mag-aaral. Yung seating arrangements. Yan. Okay. Frontal teaching po. Ito po yung frontal teaching natin. Yung teacher nandun lang lagi sa harapan. Pag-group dynamics, pwede natin gamitin ipag-grupo sila. Pwede rin yung ganito, letter U. At pwede rin po yung ganito. So, depende po sa atin. There are different approaches to teaching languages. Make the class activities much more communicative and efficient. Okay. Ah, ito, i-control din natin yung ating class energy. Kasi minsan, okay naman, pero sobrang ingay, nakaka-disturb tayo ng ibang klase. So, isa yan sa kailangan nating establish. And of course, as a teacher, meron tayong maayos na lesson plan. Okay po? I-plan natin yung lesson plan natin na mabuti, yung interest ng learners, uh, pati yung learning styles, pati yung age ng learners natin, kailangan natin consider. Teacher must always be prepared with some extra activities, no? Extension that reinforce a certain skill on one hand and keep learners busy on the other hand. And magkaroon tayo ng good time management. With this transition time, no, mga ka-CPD, i-decrease natin yung transition time hanggat maaari. Then, Okay. Ayan. Mag-offer tayo ng iba't ibang places. Okay po. Then, um, set lang tayo lagi ng rules and routines. Okay. Ito yung mga sample. Ito, pow ito power teaching classroom to rule to. Follow natin yung directions quickly. Raise your hand for permission to speak. Raise your hand for permission to leave your seat. Make smart choices and keep your dear teacher happy. At ang maganda to, i-establish natin to sa ating mga klase. Okay? Mag-set ng routines for collecting the homework, distributing worksheets, checking attendance, and the likes. Maintain lang natin students' dignity and self-esteem and encourage them to be responsible for their own behavior. Then of course, um, yung mga body language, no? nasabi ko na to kanina, um, yung pagtango, no? Yan, use natin ang facial expressions, paggamit ng hand gestures, importante po yan, um, body motions, yung ating mga audible voice. Kailangan matuto rin tayo mag-vary ng ating mga boses natin sa mga mag-aaral natin, importante po yan. And of course, yung speech natin, minsan babagal, minsan bibilis. Keep eye contact. Okay? And get into their space to give Aid. Yan yung tinatawag nating techniques 
for achieving good class management. So, balik lang natin sa isang slide natin. Okay. Ayan. Okay. So, ito yung kanina, no? Importante po yung set up din sa loob ng classroom. Okay. Remember, uh, learners involvement in activities. How can teachers increase learners involvement and participation? Ito po. Arrange natin ang seating of learners in a way that enables participation. Okay? Give effective, clear instructions hanggat maaari. Relate natin ang material to students' lives, experiences, and the current events. Maglagay tayo mga kasipin din ng reflection din. Then, pace of instruction is best if it is fast. Engage students in a group work and role-playing as misbehavior happens because students find acting out more interesting than a boring lesson. Ayaw lang nila na kung gusto nila meron silang ginagawa talaga. And, pagdating naman sa teacher-student rapport, ito na sinabi ko po, some teachers tend to create a strong bond. So, hanggat maaari, magkaroon tayo ng maayos na koneksyon sa ating mag-aaral. Teacher need to be patient, understanding, helpful. However, ito yung however, we should be strict enough, firm, and set rules and regulations that have consequences if they are violating. Okay? Huwag mangingibaba ang, ang sarcasm and humiliation. Some tips for report building. Ayan, nabanggit ko na ito kanina. Call your students by name. Repeat and paraphrase the students' answers. Kasi dito pa lang, nakikinig ka talaga sa kanila. Use eye contact, non-verbal cues such as nod, facial expressions. Reward din natin ng mga verbal praise. Then let the students know you care about them by attending an outside class activity. It means you're supporting them. Okay? Then kung hindi tayo sure sa sinasabi nila, huwag natin sasabihin na I don't understand what you are saying, what you mean. Gumawa ng paraan para mapakinggan natin sila. And mga ka-CPD, Good classroom management is also an important factor related to dealing with disruptive behavior effectively. Dahil, ito po, example sa mga disruptive behaviors. Meron kasi tayong mga mag-aaral na clowning. Alright? So, bakit sila nag-act as clown? Acting like a clown to attract attention. So, anong remedy natin dyan bilang sa teacher? Give him one private warning. Sabihan mo muna. Pag hindi pa rin, patawag mo na yung mag-aaral. Then, discuss natin yung iba pang paraan para makakuha sa siya ng attention in a academic manner. Sabihan natin na, pwede mo na makuha yung attention namin kung gagaling ako sa klase, sa klase natin. Mag-perform well. Yan. So, bigyan mo ng tip yung mga learner. Another, may mga learners tayo na refusals. Sila yung hindi gumagawa. Pag tinawag mo, hindi rin sasagot. Refusing to attempt a written assignment. So, ano ang remedy natin dyan? Offer help to the student. Show a caring attitude. Maging concerned tayo sa kanya. Look for possible reasons for his misbehavior. He might be having troubles or some kinds of disabilities. Kailangan kilalanin natin learners. So, background check din tayo. Offer encouragement for efforts made. Ayan. So, batiin pa rin natin siya. Meron din naman tayong behavior na hyperactivity. Ito yung wild sa classroom. So, moving all the time, not being able to concentrate, nor paying attention. Sila yung parang sobrang ingay. At sobrang parang nagbawala sa classroom. So, anong remedy natin dyan? Show care and passion. Okay? Pahalaga natin sila. Praise acceptable behavior and ignore natin yung mga acceptable ones. Paliwanagin natin sila Paliwanagin natin sa kanila yung magandang behavior na dapat nando sa classroom lamang. Then mag-assign tayo sa kanyang responsibility para magamit natin yung kanyang hyperactivity. Alright? So marami tayong pamamaraan bilang isang teacher. And those challenges is not only happening to new teachers but also to veteran teachers, seasonal teachers, and even some um, teachers talaga na talagang 
um, sabihin natin matagal na sa pagtuturo. Again, balikan lang nyo mga ka-CPD yung session natin and you will learn a lot from this. And don't forget to like and follow our FBPJS CPD CFT. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much mga ka-CPD sapagkat you stay with us and you've learned with us. Again, want to learn more? Subscribe and follow to CPD CFT for teachers. Thank you so much mga ka-CPD.